Okay, modeler. So today we're going to be starting on something a little bit different. Uh, this is the German multi turret tank, turret tank, and I'm not going to say the name of this thing because, as you can see up there, I have no idea how to pronounce that. To be honest, I probably could spend time trying to sound it out, but really, I just don't know. So, German multi turret. <clears throat> this one was used in the Norwegian campaign, and it's done by a group. Uh, I've never built anything from these guys before. Amusing hobby. Um, as you can see in the corner up here now, I haven't built anything from these guys before. Um, I really love the look of this tank, the multi turret sort of look to it. Um, it's something a little bit different. It's not your Panzers, Panthers, your you know your, your run of the, the mill World War Two stuff. This is a little bit different. So um, I'm really looking forward to doing this build just to see what um, amusing hobby can turn out. Um, I'm also looking forward to seeing what this thing ends up like because, um, I, like I say, I just love the look of this thing. Uh, there is only one paint option as far as the colour, it's just the German grey, that's it, there's there's no other paint schemes in the kit. I could look it up online and find other paint schemes, but then I'm going to have to look for decals and things like that. So there's actually, um, there's seven, I know, eight different schemes you can do as far as the decals that are supplied with this thing. Um, so I'm just going to have to sort of look at that at the end of the build and see which one I want to go with. But as you can see, it's it's quite a quite a clever looking um, bit of box art. It's actually a model, like it's the kit being built and painted up sort of thing. It's quite nice. Um, I don't know if I, I prefer box art where it's actually proper artwork or whether it's something like this where you can see a really nice build on that tank. That sort of inspires you to want to build what's on the box. Whereas box art is sort of like it, it, the subjects get shown off because it's in a really nice bit of artwork. Mm -hmm. But um, I do really like the, the box on this, like that, that look of um, something that has been built by another modeler. So anyway guys, <clears throat> I'll just quickly open the box here while I've got the camera on. Um, I have had this box open before and had a quick look through it. Um, please forgive the camera bumping around there guys, I'm sitting on a blanket, it's a bit cool in the shed here at the moment. Um, it's fairly straightforward instructions, it looks very much like Dragon instructions to be honest. Um, there's not a great deal of detail and there's no interior or anything like that. Um, all the assemblies look fairly straightforward. As you can see it's a little bit detailed in, you know, like some of these putting the, the uh, running wheels and things like that together. Um, there's, you know, it's, it's, as far as building armour goes, it's, it's very straightforward. There's nothing really diff different about it. Uh, a lot of things like um, the tools and stuff like that here, I'll probably leave those off to last. I'll paint those separate and put them on afterwards. There's a bit of photo etch involved, and you've got three turrets here to build, so uh, the two machine gun ones look fairly straightforward, um, and the main gun one as well is fairly straightforward. There's only about, what, six, seven pieces that go into the main one. Um, so, if, yeah, it should be fairly easy to put together, guys. It will take a little bit of time, but um, and on the back here you can see these are the different markings that you've got. Now, there is one here with camouflage on it, um, I had a quick look on the net, I couldn't find anything with that um, that look to it, but I'll have another look because maybe putting a bit of camouflage on it will be okay. But I don't mind painting German grey either because um, the one tone you can actually weather up really nicely. So you know, that's the instructions guys, inside the kit here, um, we have a little bit there on the uh, commander's turret there, commander's hatch, the decals, that's our photo etch that we've got in there, a little bit of photo etch. Please forget the plane landing in the background there. It's overcast, so it's a bit louder than normal. Now, I looked at, I've looked through all the bags and had a bit of a look. The mouldings are nice and crisp. There's no flash, uh, seam lines or anything like that we have to really worry about. Uh, there's the top part of our hull. Um, and like I say, there's not nice rivet detail and stuff like that on here. Uh, the tracks look like they might be a bit of a bit of a nightmare because they come in all these bags and there's just bags and bags full of them okay so there's three there and then there's a heap underneath as well now this this plastic here looks very um looks more like a really soft styrene sort of plastic it looks a little bit different to the rest of it but um as i go through the build i'll sort of do a bit of a review on that stuff and see what it's like to use but it does really look like the really old soft plastic used to get in the really old airfix kits and things like that um, there's a few of clear parts there, they look to be moulded fairly nicely. But yeah, all the river details, the running gear, like I say, I've been through this box, the running gear there is in all separate boxes, and um, the rivets and the, the panel lines, things like that, look really nice on this, so it's a nice crisp detail on there. But it's only going to be putting it together that's going to let us know just how good 
the uh, the kit is. It looks very good. It looks very much like a having opened a dragon box, to be honest, um, except for the different coloured plastics and that soft plastic look. But other than that, it looks very much like a dragon kit. Um, so I'll have to do a little bit of research on a using hobby and just find out, you know, whether they are a spin-off or dragon or something like that. <clears throat> anyway, guys, I'll get on with the build. I'll turn the camera back on um, when I come to different stages and show you what I'm doing. Okay, modeler, so I've got basically the um, the underside of the hull put together like the two main pieces where the all the running gear is covered up onto the side of the hull. That that fit was fine. Um, this is the top part of the hull. That's that's this is the upside down um, picture you're getting at the moment, looking from underside. And there's two the two clear parts you have to put in one on the side, and one in the front here. Now the one in the front is not a very good fit. Um, what you have to do is that lip at the front there was actually a lot longer and I had to file that back otherwise there's big gaps on either side here where that front lip holds it back from the actual plate. Um, so just be aware if you ever do this kit make sure you file that back because otherwise uh, when you paint it you're going to see there's big big, big gaps in there uh, where you can see in either side of that window there and they're not supposed to be there. Um, the one on the side just fitted straight in there, no worries at all, I just um, cut it off, cleaned the tabs up and just went straight in, but that front one definitely um, keep an eye on that if you ever do this kit. And I'll just zoom back out a little bit and I'll show you the uh, hole that I was talking about, um, that's this part here, okay, so you've got the main part of the hole and then you've got these um, sort of like covers or wheel housings or I'm not sure what they would have called these, but there's some sort of housing over, over some of the running gear and stuff like that. Now they fitted fairly well, uh, the only thing is they sort of go in, you can see on the, the other side here, over here where the tabs are, where they fitted in, uh, they had to sort of be filed from that side and that side just to make them fit in there, but you'll notice that when you dry fit, that's one of the important things about dry fitting with all your parts guys, dry fit it first and just see how it's going to go, if it needs filing, sanding, whatever, you can do it beforehand. Um, trying to force it to fit in there, it's just not going to work, you're going to break things and um, and the other thing is what happens if you, if you don't dry fit it and force things in there, they'll end up sitting crooked or out of alignment. So anyway guys, so far so good, There's, I haven't done a lot on it but um, just be aware of those couple little fit issues there and I'll turn the camera back yeah, on. Well, so we've got a little bit of a confusing set of instructions here because it, it's gone on to putting the um, the suspension on or putting your road wheels together and putting the suspension on. Now up in this corner here where I've got the camera zoomed in you can see here where it says um, uh, please refer to guide on page 13 for the assembly of complete suspension. Now you go to page 13 uh, just give me a second here and I'll get to it for you okay and I'll zoom back out a little bit okay so we're on page 13 here now it doesn't really show you that much all it shows you is that there's three suspension parts put on with the hull up the right way and those two parts we've already fitted on that that second page is saying to put those on after these suspension parts so it's a little bit confusing but you can put these on after you've put those covers on uh, there's there's a gap up underneath there and you can reach up and put them on it's showing to only put three on there uh, it also shows you over in the corner here that there's a couple of shorter pieces you can put on and the gaps that aren't used, there's um, some little plates here that go in to fill it. Now, I'm pretty sure, I'm not absolutely certain because I haven't put it together yet, but when we do the road wheels, these road wheels down, um, pull this page up so you can see it, hopefully. Okay, so once the road wheel assemblies are put together and you put these down here, hopefully these will fit straight onto those plates. Uh, and you've only got one two and three of those suspension pieces sticking out there but it's very very confusing because um, there's other little steps in there as well and I'm, I'm really not sure how this is going to work out but I just thought I'd make you aware of it that um, if you're ever building this actually particular this particular tank just be aware of that it's a little bit confusing make sure you do turn this back page and have a look um, but yeah like I say I'm, I'm only going to know as I go through and I'll start putting this together whether things going to work or not um, because when you look on this page here, it's not showing any suspension parts sticking out through there. The only thing I can think of is on that back page is showing, showing shorter and longer pieces for uneven ground. So I'm thinking you only use those to sort of make uneven tracks over uneven ground. So 
if if I'm right with that, what will happen is this will be a high point, that will be a high point and that will be a high point in the tracks. Um, and if that's right, I may be able to just take those back off again as I need to. I've only sort of tacked them on there very, very lightly. But anyway, guys, like I say, as I go through, I'll work that out as I get to those steps. And um, I'll turn the camera back on and I will let you know. Okay, modellers, so in the last part of the video, I talked about, <clears throat> I was unsure what these little pins, where they went in some of these holes and the others were plated off and I wasn't sure. Um, the instructions are a bit confusing because you've got on this page here where you're putting the wheel assembly together. I told you to refer to page 13 or something and you go there and it's still not real clear either. Um, and I couldn't figure out why these long shafts had to go on here and then it said these others just had to be plated off. You didn't actually worry about putting these on even though these parts are in the kit. Um, I've been a little bit slow on the uptake and I finally figured it out. Um, what it is is where these ones go, you've got access hatches on the sides here. I'll tip it up in the light a bit so you can see. And you've got these access hatches. So you're going to actually be able to see inside there and see those. So you want the full assembly in there. Whereas the others, you're not going to have access to see those. And I'll show you on the other side here as well. So you've got access, you'll be able to see that one. You can't see that one is behind a plate up in there. But you can see that one there definitely. And this one here you can't see either. So what happens is you plate those off and then these wheel assemblies um, are put together separately and then glued down on that plate and these wheels here are movable. Um, so just be aware when you're gluing these together too guys they're a little bit fiddly and don't glue where the wheels go onto the axles and don't glue the swivel point in the middle here. The rest of it you can glue. Um, in fact if you don't glue it it's going to be very very wobbly and flimsy. Um, so anyway guys I... Like I say, I'm a little bit slow on the uptake, took me a while to figure it out, but that's exactly what it is. So I'm going to keep going on with this wheel assembly now, get that done. Um, after that's done, I think we're going to start on the top part of the turret and then putting tools and different things on there and um, bits and pieces. So anyway guys, I'll turn the camera back on when I get to that stage. Okay, my lose this is just on a little bit of a quick tip um, I picked up because I basically just made this mistake myself. Um, and all it is basically is these, um, these springs here. Just forgive that aircraft in the background. Um, these little spring parts here that are actually up in the center of the, the wheels. I'll move this in a bit more. Okay, it's actually down in there through the center where the spring is. Now on one side of this is, oh, the one over here hasn't been cleaned up. If we have find one, here we go. Now hopefully, I'll get the camera to focus and hopefully you'll be able to see this. You see those injector pins, pin marks there? They either have to be um, filed and sanded out or turn them to make sure they're definitely facing to the inside. Like when you put the wheels on, on here, make sure that injector pin mark is on this side, on the inside. Now I made the mistake, I've got one on here that you can see the injector pin mark. I'm going to have to take that whole assembly back off and redo it. Um, or try and get some putty in there and you know, sand it down while everything's still assembled. But that's going to be very hard to do. So I'll probably take that off. Uh, I have to take sort of one half off it just to get to it. I may be able to get a little needle file in there to get it out maybe. I'm not sure. But just be aware of it. It's better to fix this before you make the mistake. Uh, just make sure they're turned to the inside or you can sand and file them out. Uh, I've already started like on this one here. Um, I've already done some filing and sanding to get rid of the, the pin mark. Let me get this to focus. You can see there you can just see it in there. Uh, you got a little bit more, just one more shave with the file and that should be out of there and you won't even notice it once we've got some weathering on those tracks. But that's not just for this kit guys, that's for um, any kit, any parts, always look, be, be aware of those injector pin marks and where they're going to be. If you can face them away to somewhere where you're not going to see them, great, that's fine. Um, but if they're going to be somewhere that, that is going to be obvious, uh, you sort of got to think ahead, is there anything going to cover this up or is it going to actually be obvious? and get rid of it now. It's easier to do it now than rather than getting things together and then going, oh no, I can see the injector pin mark in there, I've got to get it out somewhere. So it's just something to be aware of, not just with this kit guys, it's with all kits when you put them together. Okay, I'll keep moving on and um, I'll turn the camera back on when we get to the next stage. Okay, modelers, so I'm, I'm sort of up to the part now where I'm getting the tools all set up and putting on the guards and things like that. Now some of these tools are glued on, some aren't. Um, so I can't really sort of pick it up and move it around too much. But uh, just to make you aware that this kit is very much like a dragon kit, as in uh, some of the tools you can grind off the, the holders and clamps and things like that and make them out of photo etch and put them on. 
which is fine, gives you that option. Um, if you don't want to play around the photo etch, because it is very, very time consuming to play around the photo etch, um, it gives you that option. But with this kit here, I found some of the parts do that, and some of them don't give you the option. Some of them you actually have to put the photo etch on there. So just be aware if you're going to buy this kit, there is going to be some very fiddly photo etch work in it if you want to put all the tools on. Now, you don't have to put all the tools on there, you can um, just not drill the holes. Look forward in your instructions and work out what tools you want to put in, what you want to leave off. Uh, if you want to put the t all the tools on, you have to drill the holes before you put these guards on. Um, and like I say, with the Dragon Kit, you get that option. And on most tools I found on Dragon Kit, you get the option one way or the other. Um, you can grind off the clamps to put them on. But this one here, some of them you really don't. Um, you actually have to make the parts up. The parts on the back here, um, this bottle here gave you the option. I could have done this out of photo etch clamps, all these these clamps here. Uh, the uh, the jack itself, on the inside there's a handle. You can't see it on this, this footage. Uh, I'll turn it around, maybe you'll be able to see it from this angle. There's the, uh, the handle on the jack there. That had to be done with photo etch. There's a photo etch part in there that you had to put on there. Uh, it's the same with the, um, the, the S-hooks here. Same thing. The, the, there's no clamps built into them. You actually had to make it out of the photo etch. So just be aware, guys, if you're going to buy this kit and build it, you do have to do a fair bit of photo etch work with it. You don't have the option to, to get out of that. Um, if you haven't worked with photo etch before, this is probably not the best kit to start on because... Um, some of the photo etch clamps that you have to put on are very, very uh, delicate and there's, there's quite a few bends in them to get them right. Um, so if you're going to buy this kit, make sure you've done a little bit of photo etch work first. Uh, if you have this kit and you haven't done photo etch work, it's probably best to practice on some other stuff first um, or look at quite a few videos on YouTube on working with photo etch before um, you try and build this kit because, like I say, you don't have the option there. But anyway guys, I'll keep moving on with this, I'll get all the tools done. Uh, the next part of it is doing all the turrets and the, uh, and the tracks as, as well. So anyway guys, that was just to make you aware of the photo etch part of this and I'll turn the video on at the next step. Okay modelers, so just a quick note here. Uh, this is one of the reasons you want to sort of go through your instructions um, before you start building. And even while you're building, read them carefully. Look, this, this piece here it's saying that that piece is A22 okay and now I looked on the, the A sprue and 22 has already been used and it was nothing to do with this part here at all it's actually one of the uh, the spring levers on the side of the tank um, I turn, it turned out these were actually C22 so don't always think your instructions are 100% right it's just one of those things that um, I couldn't find an A22 I figured okay it's nothing to do with that so I went through the other sprues and had a look and it's the, uh, the spring levers, which I've got up here. I'll just push them into view for you. Get that piece out. Anyway, see spring levers here. And um, they're on the C sprue. So it's one of those things, guys, when you're going through and building things like this. And this is a bit of an unknown because it's amusing hobbies. It's not a drag or anything like that. So um, these things can happen. And been a complex build. There's lots of lots of parts, and <clears throat> sometimes they do get things wrong in the instructions. So don't always think, okay, it says A22. You can't find them on there, so you start mucking around the bottom of your box and think, oh, I've lost them or whatever. Just check the other sprues, and you'll probably find they've just made a mistake in the instructions. These things happen, um, but yeah, I just thought I'd make you aware of that. And uh, anyway, guys, I'll turn the camera off now. I'll turn it back on at the next step. Okay, modelers, so I'm up to the part where I'm actually assembling the tracks. I've already done one side, now I'm doing the other. Now, normally you want to use the magic tracks on the uh, the dragon kits and stuff like that, the individual track links. Um, they do come with a like a board like this that you can, you know, like lay the tracks on and then pin them together or whatever. And it's supposed to make it easier, but I always struggle with them. They don't seem to fit properly or, I don't know, I always have a bit of a hassle with them. Um, with this one here... I started assembling the tracks individually without using that board. Uh, it was a real pain because the way they go together is you put the tracks in together like that and then the other part you cut off the sprue. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'll get this to focus for you. Okay, hopefully you can see that. All it is is that little pin has got to be pushed through where the tracks join together. Now, when you're trying to do them laid out just on a piece of paper or whatever, 
it's really hard because the pin won't go through the second track sometimes and it'll bend and it'll break and all that sort of thing. Um, it was a real pain to do. And I thought, oh, I'll just give the board a try. And this thing works absolutely brilliant. It's just it's just great to use um, because it gives you the option of, I'll try and just put one in here now to show you. Um, oh, actually, that one's already got one in it. I'll put it in this one here. You just push it in like that and then just leave the pin sit there. We go through, I'll put all the pins in. Then I use a bit of the, the Tamiya um, like quick set cement and just run over where the pins go on the edge of the tracks there and you can get the track together really really quickly and efficiently like that and once it's together you can put it on the tank and it's still like it gives you enough time if you do it in one sitting that it's still pliable you can still move it around the only thing in this one here um, I'll show you on the tank itself the camera will focus guys just give it a second there we go Okay, so you can put sag in the links, but what you've got to be careful of is on this tank here, if they sag too much, what happens is they're actually dragging on this this piece here. And, I mean, obviously the real tank wouldn't have done that. It wouldn't have let the track links drag across that, that hatch. So you can put a bit of sag in it to sort of give the illusion of weight, which is awesome, but just don't make them sag too much like you would on, like, say, a Stug or uh, the Pans of Fours or something like that because um, it, it just it just won't allow you to do it because the teeth will actually start hitting on these here. And looking at photos of these things, they didn't have a lot of sag anyway. It was just barely noticeable that tracks were fairly tight on these. So um, as you can see, there's a bit of a buckle in there. I'm going to, like, because of the way I've set these up, I can sort of adjust it to where I want. But anyway, guys, that's just a hint. If you do do this tank, use use this guide um, plate here to put your parts together, put your tracks together because it really makes a huge difference. Um, also what I've got here in my hand, um, get it to focus for you, I've just got a, it's a really small size drill and I've got another one even smaller than that. Um, I just fix them to toothpicks because they won't fit in my drill bit so what I do, I drill a hole in the end of the toothpick, I put the drill in there and then I super glue it in um, so I can use that as a drill piece. Now I've got the really small one um, that does these eyelets so if there's one there that the track link won't go into I just put the drill in there and drill it out a little bit pull it out and then put the pin in and away it goes so anyway guys I'll keep putting this track together I'll get it on and then I'll turn the camera back on at the next step okay modeler so we finished the build now um, all I've done is sprayed it with the German grey and what I'm doing now is starting to fade the panels down uh, it, it built up fairly nice, it's a fairly detailed kit, there's lots of little parts. Um, some of it's a little bit over-engineered, like you know some of the Dragon kits where there's just so many pieces that could have been done in like one piece, but you've got to put them together in about nine little pieces. And yeah, But anyway, that's that's just the way they've designed it. So, But it did build up quite nice, there was no fit issues, it really sort of stood out. Uh, just you know, the, the normal things you get on armour builds. So anyway, all I'm doing now, like I say, is I'm fading it up and hopefully you can see on this side here, the light picks it up, you can see where I've been fading in the panels here. Now all I'm doing, now I could do that with an airbrush, I could mix a little bit of the original grey with a bit of white and go through and spray the panels and lighten them up like that. But what I'm actually doing is using um, a brush like oil paints here, I've mixed up a little bit of black and white just to make a really, really light grey. And all I'm doing is putting my brush in there and these are oil paints, then I go to the tissue and I wipe off the excess on the tissue and then I go to the actual panel that I'm working on and I just sort of scribble it around. Now you'll notice there's hardly any paint coming off on there but the more you work it, the lighter that panel will actually get. Okay. Now the reason I'm doing it with a brush, hopefully you can see that bit I've just done in there where it's lightened up the inside of the panel for us Okay, now the reason I do it with a brush rather than doing it with um, like airbrushing it is it gives, it gives me a lot more control. Um, I can really pick where I want the lighting to go, whereas with an airbrush it's a little bit harder it's, and it's more consistent. Um, you might be able to see it on there, but it's a very, very subtle effect, guys. And you can build it up, you can fade it more and more, like, you know, put your brush back in, wipe it off and do it again and gives you much more light and effect. You can build this effect up as much as you really want to. But I'm just going to go over the whole tank with that and it's just in the middle of the panels that I do it. The outside of the panels will be dark. Now, once I finish doing this step, uh, I'm going to hit the whole thing in a coat of future uh, to seal everything off. Then I'll do like, um, I'll put the decals on while it's got that nice shiny coat 
and I'll also do like the pin washers, like the dark pin washers around all the, uh, the panel lines and things like that. So anyway guys, I'll get on with this and next time I turn the video on you'll see uh, the overall effect of the fading and stuff like that. Okay guys, one of the things with using the, the fading technique that I was just talking about with the, uh, using the oil paint, it's, there's just a little tip or a little trick that I use um, to help to make, make it a little bit more even. Um, so you use the first brush with a little bit of oil on it. I'll just get a little bit more on this one, wipe them off a little bit. Okay. Now when you first put it on, you can see it's sort of patchy looking. Okay. And you keep it lighter towards the middle of the panel, like the middle of the panel is going to be the most faded part of it. Okay, in around there. And as a, the oil paint starts wearing off, sort of go to the outside a little bit. I'll wipe a little bit more off that. Okay. So you fade into the outside as well, but only a lot lighter on the outside. Okay, let me around a little bit more. Okay, you can see that sort of faded that panel up, but it looks very, very patchy looking. It doesn't look quite right. So I've got another brush here. This one here is very clean. It's got no oil or anything on it. Now all this does, I just rub it over like so, just nice and soft. And as you can see, what that does is blend it. It sort of blends it in, takes that patchy look away. So the fading looks a lot more even. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go into the middle with some white again. So this middle part here will look more faded than the outside does. Okay, so we've got more fading going on there. I'll just get a bit more oil on the brush here. Like so. So this middle part's really, really faded compared to the outside. Clean brush again. Okay. I sort of do it in circular patterns so it, it, it makes it look a little bit better. Now you may have to sort of move it around, look at it from different angles to make sure it looks okay. But um, from that, that bit there, get the camera to focus for you. Okay, you can see that's nicely faded there now. Still a little bit patchy looking, but it's, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be a little bit patchy looking anyway because I mean, it doesn't fade completely even. Um, you want it to be a little bit patchy, but you can keep playing with it as, as you want to keep going along. But um, once you start doing the rest of the weathering over it, put a bit of dust and streaking and stuff like that, that effect's going to be like not lost, but it'll be really, really dulled down. Um, it, it appears still faded, but once you do streaking over it, it won't be quite as strong, that effect. Okay, modelers, so the point I'm up to now, it's all painted. I put... Uh, a clear future coat over the whole thing as you can see by the glossy surfaces on there at the moment and I'll put the decals on there I've got to say the decals were really nice in this kit they went on beautifully actually I, when I was looking at them on the on the backing sheets I thought they might have been a little bit thick or something but they just uh, they went on there really really well uh, once I put the decals on there I've gone around and give it a wash uh, just like with a, a dark oil wash like a, a black and a dark brown mixed together and I've put it on fairly rough, as you can see, I haven't just sort of followed, you know, the uh, engraved panel lines and things like that. I've sort of brushed it around fairly thick. Now what I do is I clean this up by, I dip my brush in some white spirit, and then I just wipe it off on a tissue so it's not really saturated. And then I just sort of go around and take off the excess that was left behind. And I do it in a motion that streaking would occur on the tank. So I'm going in a downward motion on the side here, taking off the excess. Now once you've done it a few times, put your brush back in the turps, wipe it on the tissue again. Keeps it nice and clean so that you're not, you know, if you've got a dirty brush, all it's going to do is spread that black wash around there. And don't go over the area too much because what you'll do, you'll end up just cleaning the whole lot of that wash off there. And the idea is, this is sort of like a, a, a technique that I use um, mainly to do... It's sort of like a filter as well as a, a pin wash at the same time and it also gives it that dark and dirty grubby appearance it breaks up that that paintwork a little bit more so that's all i'm doing guys i've been over the entire tank and now i'm going to go over and do this technique over the entire tank just slowly little bit by little bit if there's a, a piece like i can see some weld there that didn't get any of the wash what i'll do i'll when i go off camera i'll put a little bit more wash into that part there uh, just so we can see that well beat a lot better 
Now on the decals themselves, it's quite a good technique in that it makes the decals look a little bit grubby as well. As you can see that one there, there's a couple of spots on there now that look a little bit grubby. They're not, you know, just that stark white sort of look. Um, well, you mightn't be able to see it, the camera's a bit too shiny. But as you can see down this, this bottom corner here, I've left a bit on there. And as I go through and weather it a bit more, that it'll just dull that white right back. Because you don't want to have stark white decals sticking out. It just doesn't suit the appearance of the rest of the tank. Because obviously the rest of the tank's going to be a little bit grubby, fairly dusty looking. I'm going to have some oil streaks running out of these, these top loader wheels. Uh, I've seen some photos where quite a few of them have oil just running down out of here. There must, must be grease points or something in there. And anyway guys, I'll keep going on with this part. The next part I'm going to do, I'm going to spray it in a dull coat and then I'll start on the weathering part. Okay, modeler, so I've been around, <clears throat> I've taken all the excess pin wash and filter colour off there and now I'm actually going to start doing some weathering with some powders. Now, normally I put like a satin coat or a matte coat over it before I do this but this time around what I'm going to do is I'll do it over the gloss coat uh, it shows you that it can work, it's just very much more, it's a very subtle effect. The powders don't stick to it as much, but I want to do like a subtle coat and then I'll put some matte over it and I'll do probably a, uh, some darker stuff over the top of that. It's just to sort of build it up in layers. Now all I'm using this time, rather than using, like normally I'll use this stuff here, the, the AK like weathering fluids and that. Now I love these things, like they're fantastic for what they do. But I just want to show people you don't have to have all that stuff to be able to do this sort of weathering. Um, just some pastel chalks or you know like these these MIG um, or whatever brand they are like just weathering powders. Now I've got all those set up at the end. Just a little trick with your weathering powders when you're going to use lots of different colours. Have them opened up so you can see the colour of the powder so the lid opens back that way. Set them on the table so they're facing and you can actually see the different colours facing towards you. So you can mix the colours up a bit. You're not using, uh, you know, you don't have to keep spinning the bottle around to see what colour you're dipping into. But the idea is to build it up in layers and use some different colours. Don't use the same colours. And if you're going to use different colours, make sure there's, a, there's some contrast in them. Don't use colours that are too close together because you just won't be able to pick it up. Okay, so all, all I'm doing... Um, the camera's out of focus so I've restarted this section. Okay guys, so all I'm doing now is I'm going to dip my brush into a few different colours and I'll just put it along where all the studs are, sort of thing. Okay, that's one colour, put a little bit up there and get a little bit of a different colour. Put on some other studs here. Okay, I'll get a bit of a darker colour now. Put some up along here like so, some in the corner here. Okay. Now blow off the excess, I'll brush off the brush so it hasn't got a heap of powder on it. And I just really, really lightly just sort of blend that all in like so. Okay. Now the idea is, guys, this is a very, very subtle sort of a build-up. And as I go through with the different colours and slowly build the, the effect up, it's going to come up really, really nicely. Okay, I'm hoping the camera can pick this up okay for you. I've got a fair bit of light on there, maybe a little bit less light might might help. We'll see how that looks. But you can see you're getting that nice, there's different colours sort of coming into play there. And by the time I go over this, you know, half a dozen times, it's going to really, really blend in really nicely. Now, one of the things with this tank, because of this big box section that's over all the running gear and that, it would have built up a lot of mud and dirt and stuff like that. So that's going to come later on. After I do this subtle effect, I'm going to put some build up weathering powders up inside here, up along the top here and the top of the box because that would have collected a lot of dirt and mud and things like that. I'll build that up, up afterwards. But the sides here would have had a lot of streaking effect. They would have also, if they're running through brushes, would have had like, you know, scratch effects along the side, which you can do that as well to add a little bit more of, you know, authenticity to it. But I'm not going to worry about doing the scratches so much. I might do a little bit. I'll just quickly show you what what you can do and once you've got them weathering powders on there if you want to put you know scratch marks you just need a toothpick okay and just run it through okay now what what the, that'll do is actually cut through the weathering powder and it'll go back to that that gray color okay and it looks like it's been running through bushes and grasses and things like that uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that on this kit you can also use pencils as well you know coloring pencils but anyway guys that's all I'm doing I'm just going to go around all the tracks and stuff first like all these box sections just mixing different powders in 
I'll do that. I'll do the same up here around the turret. Any of these sections where I'm going to brush downwards. Up on top on the flat surfaces, I'm going to do something a little bit different because it's hard to sort of blend them in. You, you, you won't have streaking effects. It'll be more like, you know, marbled effects up there. So anyway, guys, I'll get on doing this and I'll turn the camera back on when I get to the next section. Okay, modeler. So we're up to sort of weathering the uh, the flat surfaces on, on the tank. Now, the way I do this is a little bit different to the way I do the sides. Now, I use a big soft brush, okay, and what I do is just weather it in small circles like so. And the idea is to use the different different um, colours like we did on the side. Use a few, few different colours, like spread it around a little bit when you get the brush full like that. Okay, and just in nice gentle circles. Now the idea is, again, to have different colours to sort of break the pattern up. If you've got the same colour on there, it just doesn't look natural. Now, you don't have to overdo it on the flat surfaces. It depends on what you want to, you know, like the finish you want to end up with. If you want it to be a really well weathered tank that's been in, you know, lots of lots of mud and dust and things like that, you can really, really overdo the effect. But, um... In this case here, hopefully you can see that. I'll just draw back out a little bit because I'm not sure if you can actually notice. I'll turn the light away a little bit there. Um, hopefully you can see what we've done on the surface. So I'll do a little bit more because I think that light might be a little bit bright and you're not sort of picking up what I'm doing here. Hopefully you can do a little bit more here and you can sort of notice what I'm talking about. The idea is to have like, you know, a bit of dust on the surface so it looks like the tank has been used. It's been in combat there, you can see a little bit better there. That front part compared to the part up where the uh, the hatch is, the difference in those. Now, I'm going to put a few more colours on there just to weather that up. Now, the other thing is, I'll draw back out again a little bit so you can see it. On the sides here, now what I've done is i peppered all the different colours of weathering powders right up inside the guards up in here, up inside these flat box areas. Then I use white spirit on a big thick brush and just sort of wet it where it was sitting and that just sort of makes it hang on to the surface a little bit more. Then after that you can see where the streaking effects are. We can actually continue on with those streaking effects now from the stuff that's sitting on those guards. And as you can see it comes up quite nice. Now the thing is using the white spirit, you can see the outline there where the white spirit is still a little bit wet. So make sure it's all dry before you do that. And you may have to use a fairly stiff brush because where it's actually got onto the powder it'll make it set like in clumps okay and you may have to use a stiff brush to sort of break it up a little bit and get it to move it around but um, again you know you can go over it again and sort of keep building the effect up as much as you want now the idea is the running gear gets really dirty and dusty and stuff like that the top of the tank gets dust you know like dust gets layered on it but it doesn't get thick and dirty like it does down around the tracks and guards and things like that. So I'm going to do on the top part of the tank, like I showed you, um, I'm going to do that, that, that effect that I, we were talking about at the beginning of the video here. And then the rest of the tank is just going to be sort of lightly, you know, weathered up. And then the, on, down on the tracks and guards, I'm probably going to go over that probably about two or three more times, just with some different colours, just to sort of really, really... Uh, make it stand out and make it look dusty and dirty with all the different colours. So anyway guys, I'll keep going on with these techniques and I'll turn the camera back on when I get to the next step. Okay modelers, so we're finished off here now and like I was saying before, I didn't use the AK Interactive um, streaking effects. The only place I did use them is up here. You can see these rusting effects down from the hooks and things like that. That is the only place I used them. Everywhere else I used the weathering powders just to finish it all off and as you can see like I was saying before these tanks would have collected mud and everything down on the lower tracks on the top they would have collected the dust so you can sort of see a, a really stark contrast between down here and up the top um, I've tried to keep the weathering powders fairly similar as in the yellowy sort of dusty sort of effect down here is up here as well but just in a bit of a lighter shade um, it's the same with the back here. I've done the back. As you can see on the back hatch, it would have collected a heap of dust and dirt down there. And then just the light dust would have blown up over the top. <clears throat> it's the same on this side here. Now, the only thing I have done different is I'll just grab something to point with here. 
And as you can see down here in these little effects here, this, this leaky oil effect, some of the photos I've seen had that leaky oil effect like there and there where there's always some grease points and stuff like that inside these tracks where they would have greased it and it would have leaked down inside those. Um, so that's, that's the only AK okay interactive stuff we used. Everything else has just been the um, just dust effects. Now this can be done with pastels, AK okay interactive, um, whatever sort of weathering patterns you got. And like on the top of the turret here, um, as you can see, it's just very, very lightly done. Um, I've gone over with the um, the silver effect, like just dry brushing over the gun barrels, over the top of the hatches, things like that, just to sort of give those that, that metallic effect where they would have been sort of using the equipment a fair bit. And um, I'm not going to take any still photos, guys. I'm just going to turn this thing around so you can get some, you know, like really good looks at it as it is in this picture. Um, I've got the backdrop in the background, which is the um, the one they built up, like for the desktop art there and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, guys, hope you like this build. Uh, if you want to see some still shots of it, just you know put them in the comments below. I will do some still shots and put those up. But um, I'm I'm very happy with this build. It looks really um, really good. From like this is the sort of look I was after, with the really dirty bottom half and just dust up over the top half. And uh, I mean, I, I know in the camera it looks a little bit funny because it looks like this is all yellowy and sort of dusty down here and there's nothing on the top. But in real life it actually looks quite good because um, you have got the, the, the dusty yellow on the top where it would have settled. But anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this build. And um, just leave the comments below if you want me to see some still shots or anything like that. Let me know and I'll put some still shots up of, of the whole project. Okay, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.